Well, I have to tell you that I worked really hard to avoid writing this address and that the staff uh, had to watch me play with iMovie uh, for quite some time. And so I made a very special video for you uh, that I did before I wrote the rest of the address, actually. But I want to start with it just to show you the kind of profound creativity your bishop has. So could we, could we roll the video to prove that I was actually working to my diocesan staff? Welcome to Bishop Doyle's World of Wonder. Our first newsreel today is from 1929, the Indiana Bell Telephone Building, which was moved by the miraculous power of steam, while 600 employees continued to work there every day. Imagine the wonder that is the Indiana Bell Telephone Building. Now, folks, fast forward. Just as the Bell Building was being uh, moved and people were settling in, the Lagana Shanghai in China School Building was being built. Now, some 85 plus years later, step by step, this cultural lamp center of Shanghai is moved to its new location thanks to robotics. Imagine a world of wonder. I made that myself. That's pretty good, huh? <laughs> what you saw was the Indiana Bell building, which was moved by steam power over 30 days in 1929, uh, while 600 people continued to work in the building, by the way. And the second video was more recent, an 85-year-old landmark in the center of Shanghai, China. It took them 18 days, step by step, as the robotics literally walked the building into its new position. These engines of our ingenuity, these images for me are uh, of the church moving into the future. Now, it's not a perfect uh, metaphor, but I like it. I like the idea of, of this kind of building and people working and the thing slowly moving forward into what is yet uh, unseen. As people scurry about their daily lives, we in the church come in, we go out filled with the Holy Spirit, we repurpose and redesign and make ready for the mission that is before us. We go and we serve the world constantly being sent out. Time moves on and our church moves too. We think anew about church plants, missional communities, campus missions, slowly and faithfully, attentively. Sometimes I think the movement itself is almost imperceptible. Sometimes, though, you also can't help but notice, as in the report we just heard. It can be easier to look back, I think, sometimes and see the change, the places that we've been and where we've come from, to uh, look forward and to imagine can be a little bit more difficult. Yet God is imagining with us. God is filling our churches with the Holy Spirit, enlivening us for God's mission. In the scripture, we're told that the Holy Spirit is poured out in Acts, right? Sons and daughters will prophesy that young people shall see visions and old folks shall dream dreams. And this is happening in the Diocese of Texas. And I can testify to the small and the large efforts that are transforming people's lives across the 57 counties uh, that we inhabit. The people of the Diocese of Texas are awake and beginning to ask questions about where we're going and what can we do together and how can we make a difference in the world around us. From the pandemic, we are re-engaging 
the work that God has given us to do. We're still sorting some things out, still trying to figure things out. We are grieving where we need to grieve. We are giving thanks for life lost where we need to give thanks. And yet we also recognize that we stand upon the shoulders of saints who have come before and in each generation met the challenges, some of them similar, some of them much more difficult than the pandemic, and have offered a future that we've now inherited. And we pray, how are we, you and I, going to take our place in the long story, in the long narrative that is the Diocese of Texas? Now, one of the things I have to tell you that um, I get frustrated with is that I hear uh, from time to time, uh, the idea that the church uh, is dying. Well, it is dying where it must die, but it's also constantly being reborn. For us as Christians, death is not the end, it is only a new beginning. For the imperishable, as Paul reminds us, remains imperishable. That's always been true. There's a long list of communities and schools and ministries that no longer exist today, and there's many a, a list that many on the list that do. It, it's, it's only the, the perishable though that passes away. The church, the first fruits of the kingdom, the imperishable church is not dying, and that is the organization, if you will, that temple of the Holy Spirit to which you and I have pledged our faith, uh, faithful work in the name of Jesus. It is resurrected constantly, and it's on the move, step by step. Come labor on, we sing. Who dares stand idle on the harvest plain while all around us waves the golden grain? And to each servant does the master say, go and work today. Come labor on, claim the high calling of angels cannot share to young and old the gospel gladness bear. Or as we are taught, sing a song full of faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us, facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. God is not done with us. God is not done with this diocese or your congregations. God is not done with the Episcopal Church. God has more for us to undertake on God's behalf. I have not received the news that we are finished. God intends us to continue to beckon workers into the field, to sow, to tend, to mend, harvest, and begin again when we fail, learning from our failures. Turning to our slides, I wanna show you just what we've been up to this past year, as I typically do as a diocese, and what we're accomplishing together, how all of you on the boards and committees and commissions and institutions and in your congregations and in the mission field, uh, what you're undertaking. The first slide is really about our stewardship together. And what it shows you is that we share a common work as the diocese. It's not my work, it's not my vision, it's not my budget, it's ours. Uh, and we do some particular work around communications, and uh, canons, and congregational development, mission amplification, and we do that uh, with two sources of dollars. One is the 2.6 million that's shared by uh, the endowments, which I think is appropriate because a large, the largest part of the staff actually is managing uh, our finances and endowments for those parts of the organization, and then the 7.1 million uh, from parishes in our uh, assessment. Uh, this, is, this is our work that we do together. And so if we move to slide number three, what you'll see is that we, as part of that stewardship, give uh, over a million dollars, gave over a million dollars this last year to uh, the wider Anglican Communion uh, and to the Archbishop's Office, and we also gave 1.5 million to the wider ministry of the Episcopal a church. This is everything from helping uh, the, the new flourishing diocese of the South Sudan to uh, presiding officers, uh, Archbishop of Canterbury and Michael Curry's discretionary fund uh, to help uh, people in need, to support uh, the work of our three partner dioceses, 
um, we are making a difference in the wider world. And if we go to number four, the slide number four, what you'll see is that in turn, so while that's coming in and going out doing uh, a work of the diocese, through stewardship, these foundations, the ones listed here, pump another $9 million back into your ministry. I'm, I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong, but I don't think any diocese takes in $7.1 million and then returns to the congregations $9 million, right? I think this is, a, and this is your leadership that does this, that enables us to raise up and support you. One of the things we do, and we turn to slide number five, is our campus ministries. So when I began, we had nine. Today we have 24 campuses reached towards our 80 campus goal in the Diocese of Texas. And uh, one of our endowments helps to support the uh, staff and the ministry of our campus missions with a $755,000 grant. Uh, so that's underwriting all of the campus ministries across the diocese. If you have a university, one of those 80 campuses is in your backyard as a congregation, and we'd like to help you reach out and start a campus mission there. This is the most important ministry, I think, that we have uh, as a diocese, as we share as a diocese, that we can be doing uh, evangelism and mission for the future of the church uh, not because we need to check off the boxes of those 80 campuses, but because students really need us. Uh, they need to, a place of love and caring and affirmation as they face the hard work that they do. And I just, again, want to give thanks for our campus missioners uh, and everything they undertake. If we go to our next slide, what you'll see is that we are aiming for 2025 to hit 30 church plants. We're using about $1.6 million a year for our church starts. And uh, what I would tell you is that we have moved during my tenure from 152 uh, Christian communities in the Diocese of Texas to 236. So this is, again, looking at how we are engaging mission from campus ministries to churches to small Christian communities and missional communities. We go to slide number seven. This gives you a sense. A lot of people want to know how we're doing regarding vocations, and this helps you understand that uh, we have, uh, even in the midst of a COVID uh, season, that we still have people looking uh, and joining us uh, for ministry, discerning the call for ministry. Um, this is not just a discernment for priestly or diaconal ministry. It is a discernment for lay ministry as well and trying to seek to raise up leaders uh, for the work uh, that we see before us. If we go to slide eight, and we'll have a little bit of a report uh, in a little bit about our new uh, transitions, but you'll see here we had a, a large number of transitions over this last year. Uh, our future uh, goal um, in the next few years, though, is going to require that we continue to both raise up clergy for church planning and new mission work and lay people, but also that we call people into the Diocese of Texas who are on fire for Christ and eager to do mission with us. Uh, and we have a great group uh, of inspirational people who are joining us uh, this year, uh, and I'm grateful for all the work that the team does and that you do as congregations. Uh, somebody uh, pulled me aside yesterday and said, you gotta find us a priest. I said, yeah, you gotta go get to work because you know it's a partnership, right? It's a partnership between our office, the work that we do, and you, and we really count on your discernment to bring people excited about the future of the church to this diocese. That's what we want. We want people who come and will love and care for us, but also who will help lift our eyes to the horizon of what God is doing. So as we begin to uh, uh, count our impact on the wider society this year, so one of our goals has been to try and figure out kind of what What's happening? How many lives are we, we say we want to impact the people's lives in Texas? Like, what does that actually mean? Can we count that? 
Uh, and this winter, we did, we began the numbers. Now, these numbers that I'm going to show you are, are based on some large congregational ministries where we know the numbers of people served. It's based on some numbers from the congregations. It's based on the work that we do through the Episcopal Health Foundation and uh, ministries like El Buen Samaritano, St. Vincent's House, right? So, so we've got a sense, some of our school institutions and the parents' lives here. So we have a, a beginning sense, but we have not, I want you to know that before you see this, we haven't actually started to measure X's congregational work in its local food bank yet. Right, so this is just the beginning of how many people's lives that we're affecting in the diocese of Texas. So Episcopalians make up a quarter of a percent uh, our new, uh, in our diocese, in our 57 counties, and um, there's about 72,000 plus of us, and I did this, and the new secretary, Marcia, said that doesn't add up. And I said, well, I am an art major. <laughs> but what I want to say is it's a lot easier for me to get my head around a quarter of a percent than the point zero 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 six percent that we actually make up, right? So I'm just going with a quarter. I'm being generous, right? We'll get there. Uh, there are 11 million, almost 12 million people living in our 57 counties. With our endowments, with your work, with your ministry, through the various organizations, we gave over $35 million to health and programs to support engagement with our neighbors and communities. So together, all of that I've just shown you, all of this work, uh, plus uh, the leaders on the boards together, and let's go to slide number nine, we can there. So we affected over 14% of the people living in our diocese. We touched the lives of 14%. That is a huge number of people. We impacted in 2021. This is just 2021. That's the lives of 72,000 people to over 1.6, almost 1.7 million people were affected by the ministries in the Diocese of Texas. Your work, your ministry. And we think those numbers are on the low side, as I have already said. We imagined, we imagined 10 years ago, over 10 years ago now, when I first became your bishop, 13 years ago, that we would impact Texas and the people living here. And I wanted to show you that's what you're doing. Yes, I'm the bishop, but you do the work. And it's miraculous. It's amazing. We started, when we first started this project, we thought, hey, let's shoot for like 1%. Wouldn't it be amazing if we did 1%? And here we are hitting it out of the park at 14%. And that's happening through churches and schools and outreach ministries. If we believe in the future, it will not be enough for us to set aside dollars for mission through evangelism and service. That we've done. We've reorganized our endowments so that everything is now outward focused to mission and ministry through our congregations or out in the field with new work. But we have to consider how do we as a diocese back up this work, right? How do we ensure that we have the resources that are needed to move into that future? Because we know, we recognize that the cost of doing business continues to go up. It goes up in lots of different ways from electricity, right, to the cost of salaries, uh, uh, buildings, planting churches, all of these kinds of things have dollars attached to them. And so we've been attentive, not just kind of focusing all those endowments and dollars, if you will, to support you all to bring down the cost of doing business in our assessment from 17% to 6 to 10%. So we've done that part, but we have to think today about what else is needed. We can't stop there. We have to continue to, to believe in the future and ask ourselves what is needed. So three years ago, I began to work, uh, socialize an idea uh, with some leaders of the diocese, quietly, privately, and over recent months, 
those two initiatives that I imagined with a group of, of you has come to fruition, and I want to share that. I'm really grateful, truly grateful, to some leaders who advise me. One of them is David Harvin, sitting over here to my right, Elena Marks, Lynette Diley, and Bob Blakely. Uh, and I am grateful to the Episcopal Health Foundation uh, for their support. So if we'll go to slide number 10. The first grant is to the Quinn Foundation in the amount of $200 million to create a wellness fund to benefit clergy and their families and the employees of the diocese. This year, we began to lift the pressure of the cost of insurance for clergy from you all, from the parishes. But you still have a little bit of an insurance assessment there. This will fund in perpetuity the family insurance and insurance for the staff of the Diocese of Texas and permanently remove this from our diocesan budget and need to raise those funds. We've been great, uh, we are so grateful to the Episcopal Health Foundation who's given five million to this project uh, which ha was created in 1960 by the way. We started paying for insurance in 1960 and today it's grown to over seven million dollars. So we have to provide for the continued increase here in order to keep dollars from coming out of the congregations to do this. So would you give a big round of applause, please, to those folks who have made this possible. A few years ago, I imagined with you the need of vocational training, and we've seen some of those numbers about how we're raising people to do this new work that God imagines for us. And the second gift, is, uh, which we'll show you in slide number 11, is for $60 million, also to the Quinn Foundation, in order to provide future leaders to the Diocese of Texas. This will lift and ensure that nobody who goes to seminary graduates with debt created by seminary training. In so doing, it multiplies all the previous gifts to our seminaries uh, in the church for scholarships. So we'll be able to provide at the Seminary of the Southwest scholarships for everybody who attends. So this is a big, big deal. It multiplies our, our scholarships at Swanee. It multiplies our scholarships at Virginia Seminary. But we also need to realize that our Christian formation efforts today are really scattered. It is all over the map. Many congregations don't have Christian formation opportunities. Uh, there's a, a lack of common and shared resources. And one of the things that that tells me as a leader, and anybody who works in corporate America will tell you this, if we lose who we are as the Episcopal Church and the vision that's before us for a lack of Christian formation that is particularly Episcopal, we're gonna be in trouble. Right? So we have to raise up, not just leaders, but we have to raise up Episcopal leaders to take, and which is one of my requirements, is to take on the faith that I've been handed and pass it on to the next generation. So this is an important piece of the formation that will be, uh, formation dollars that will be used. Now, uh, we're really excited, <laughs> and we're gonna have to organize. So you're gonna have to give us some time <laughs> to organize how to give this, these dollars away and into uh, the wider church uh, over the next year. So I'm excited about the prospects, and again, uh, 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 warm uh, applause, not just for the people who made it happen, but also for the Quinn board who will take on these new ministries. These two funds, though, along with everything else we've done in the diocese, reveals, I think, to us, to each other, in those moments maybe we wonder or we're tempted to say that the church is dying or that we're hopeless about what's taking place around us. These are all just images 
of the life and vitality that's already present in the Diocese of Texas and in you. And I hope that it will help lift your spirits to see I'm investing in the future of the Diocese. I want you to invest. The foundations are investing. I believe in this work. And I love it. This is an amazing position to have where I get to visit every Sunday with a congregation and see the amazing things that you all do. It can be a big congregation, it can be a small, it doesn't matter. On Sunday, I'm going to St. Paul's in Navasota, a faithful congregation. Is it big? No. We're St. Paul's, raise your hands, we're St. Paul's. Way over there, St. Paul's, coming to see them on Sunday. But they have put together resources for children and we're gonna bless a space where they collect uh, uh, things that are needed for children uh, as they make transitions in their own life in different kinds of family systems. And we're gonna bless that. And it's St. Paul's Navasota. It's in a miraculous ministry that you all have undertaken. And it's just a sign. I get to do that Sunday after Sunday and campus missions and, and, and uh, church plants. It's an amazing, amazing, uh, I hope a reflection to you of what God is doing, a generous God who also believes in the future of the kingdom of God and the Diocese of Texas part in it. Now, uh, in lieu of an hour and a half long address, we'll go to slide 12. I'm gonna be in a neighborhood near you for our 360 tour. So uh, in March, I'll be out on the road in these congregations We'll be circulating this through our social media, but I hope you'll join me. I wanna talk a little bit with you uh, more about what's going on and kind of how we see the pandemic playing itself out as well as what we can do over the next three, uh, three and a half years as we head towards 2025. So uh, I hope that you'll join me for those. It'll be a very casual, an opportunity for us to visit and talk. Really important for me to listen. I was supposed to do this two years ago right as the pandemic hit, so we've moved it a little bit, but I think we'll have more to say and more to help us uh, understand what's going on. So let me just close by say this is, I'm really, as I said last night, so grateful to be here together at Diocesan Council to dream together about the work that we've been given to do. And I want you to know that uh, I'm excited uh, to see what God has in store for us. Um, we, we are grabbing a hold of something. It's hard to tell what it is yet, but the Spirit is moving here in this place. Um, and and God, uh, the image keeps coming to me of God's breath in the dry bones, right? When, when I feel weak, I, I have a sense that God is present to lift me up, and I have that greater sense for the whole church, and that we are in the Diocese of Texas together breathing life with God's spirit into the future of mission. We face division. Uh, we'll continue to face division. We've faced a global pandemic, financial crisis, changing culture, but step by step, we move faithfully, intentionally, with a vision for our future ahead of us, leading us. So I wanna stir us up, as that colleague says, stir us up and let us break out of the graves of isolation and fear of anxiety about this or that, of any wind that blows this way and that way. I think the scripture says it. Let us be intentional about our future and know that God is leading us with God's cross, the cross of Christ. Let us prophesy and dream. Let us, let us give each other a measure of hope and heart when we see that we are down. When people doubt, let us raise their heads and let us help the blind to see that God is doing new things in the Diocese of Texas and in our congregations. And I'm, I'm eager 
to see us refuse <laughs> the lie that God is finished or that the church is dying or there's nothing new here for us. Let us join together and take up our own cross with the message of the empty tomb. Now, lastly, I've served for 13 years. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm not going, that, that could be good news or bad. I don't, you know, like it just is the way it is. But I'm here. We have an excellent house of bishops in the Diocese of Texas. And yeah, we do. I mean, it's like to serve with three great other bishops. I'm like, I'm being honest. And uh, together we have over 40 years of experience in the, and just the bishops. And have amazing, you have an amazing staff. You've helped me put together an amazing staff to serve with you. And I, yeah, I think it's good to give them an applause. So let us, let's do the work. <laughs> let's lean in together. And when we're tempted to be torn apart, let us lean in ever more so. It's God's at work here. God's at work here. Let us bless the Lord.